The conspiracy for world government is back on track. We're going to be looking at this fascinating subject on today's Prophecy in the News. For example, a new currency is being proposed now for the United States, a currency that we've looked for for over a decade. When in 1991 changes were made, they were not enough, evidently. Now, just a few years later, they're wanting to make more changes in order for the United States currency to conform to the currencies of the rest of the world. This new one world monetary system is almost put in place. And to set the theme for uh, this century, the Psalms, of course, tell the story. Gary Stearman is here to discuss with me the conspiracy for world government. Mm. And of course the question, J.R., becomes this. Uh, why? Why? Who, who would want to found a giant world government? Why isn't the, the present system adequate? Uh, we have a series of nations with their own leaders, their own cultures, and so forth. Why don't we just leave it that way? The question then is, why would the leaders of the world want to align themselves together? And of course that brings us to Psalm 2 which sets the tone, yes. really, for this century that we're living in. Yes, it does. And I think we can see this attempt by the governments of the world to create another Babylon. Mm. Remember the first Babylon in Genesis? That first Babylon when men said, let us stick together. Let's oh, yeah. build us a world government. Let's build us a city, make us a name. And uh, we don't need God. That was the purpose of the original Babylon. Listen to Psalm 2, and please understand that Psalms 1 and 2 give the theme, uh, the various themes for this century. And Psalm 1 tells us the theme that Israel is going to be reborn. The Jews are going to return to their fatherland. Psalm 2 talks about war and conspiracy for world government. The kings of the earth set themselves, that is, they position themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. This is a conspiracy for world government without God. The nations are getting together and they are saying, Let's, let's build a utopia without God. Let's cast off the restraints the cords that bind us, this Bible, these laws of morality, let's cast them off and build our own society without God. Mm -hmm. This is the attempt that we have seen through this century. Mm -hmm. And you know, Gary, as we launched into this 20th century, with the turn of the century back in 1900, 1901, uh, there were a group of international bankers that were plotting and planning for this world government, mm. even then. Indeed, and you know, it all comes under the heading of utopian socialism. When man is without God, the very first thing that enters into his mind is, I've got to create a kingdom and some order and some decency somehow. Mm -hmm. I may not have God's uh, word, or his laws, his rules, his principles, uh, so what will I do? And immediately he begins to devise a system. Well, it's called yes. socialism, utopian socialism. When you were reading from Psalm 2, uh, you, you read verse 2, but I'd like to read verse 1 because it asks the question we're mm -hmm. dealing with today. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? God calls it a vain thing. That is to say, men's devices will come to naught. Now, yes. you talked about uh, men meeting in this century. Yeah, and these heathen are Gentiles, by the way. They are indeed. You know. And, and there are folks who say it's a Jewish conspiracy for world government, but not so. Not, not so. Not so. This is a Gentile conspiracy for world government uh, by the international banking cartel. And uh, so this, this imagining a vain thing here is mm -hmm. certainly vain. In fact, it goes on to say, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. I think we can see a panic-driven derision uh, among those international bankers today. Indeed. And you know, we had a, a global and international council that was founded, J.R., in 1921. Uh, Council for Foreign Relations. It's kind of interesting what we read in Psalm 21 yes. in, in that respect. Uh, just before getting to Psalm 21, let me just set the pace for that because, you see, Psalm 21 describes what happened in 1921. That's, I don't know, we don't have time to go back and tell you why we believe that. You'll, you'll just have to, you know, get, 
get the book Hidden Prophecies <laughs> and the Psalms. But here's a book called The Planned Destruction of America. And it says in this book on page 53, other similar institutes of international affairs were established in the chief British dominions and in the United States, where it is known today as the Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR. It was established in New York on July 29, 1921 as a front for J.P. Morgan and Company, in itself a front for uh, the international banking cartel. So, the Council on Foreign Relations, which has been plotting and planning and conspiring for world government and a world economic system, was organized in 1929. Uh, in 1921, Gary, tell us what Psalm 21 tells us about. Well, 21, uh, Psalm 21, J.R., uh, and of course the Psalms being a chronicle of the 20th century, particularly from Israel's point of view, uh, speak of an opposition group. And as you uh, as you read about the opposition group. Uh, we read in verse 11 of Psalm 21, For they intended evil against thee, they imagined a mischie mischievous device, which they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back, when thou shalt uh, make ready thine arrows upon the strings against the face of them. We have here a group arrayed against Israel, which uh, thinks that it will be successful. Now this is a theme that runs all the way through uh, the Psalms. From Psalm 2 and onward, uh, we, we find a, almost, it's like a melody, a recurring, if you will, theme in the Psalms that a, uh, if you will, a cartel, a group, a body of nations uh, aligns itself against Israel. But right from the beginning it's called vanity. That is, the system doesn't work, and it says so right here in in Psalm 21, they mm -hmm. think they're going to be successful, but they're not. They imagine yes. a vain thing. Now, what is it that they're imagining? They are imagining that they can actually create a utopia without God, mm -hmm. a perfect society. And how do you do that? You create a beautiful system of what? Yeah. Money, uh, a flow of uh, prosperity, prosperity, mm -hmm. perhaps energy, transportation. Uh, you knock down international boundaries, you create an international currency. All of these things really are part of the same system so that when you look at the elements, you're looking at one huge system. And we propose now to look at a few of the elements that we're noticing mm -hmm. that have recently sprung upon the pages of the newspapers. Now, you know, Gary, you talked about producing a utopia without God, without and yet it's a perfect society. Well, how do you have a perfect society if you don't have any morals? Yeah. Uh, if people are not honest? That's the foundation that the Bible gives to us, uh, how to relate and interrelate with other people. Well, when people are um, not Christians and they have this void in their heart, uh, this dishonesty that they were born with, how do you make those people be honest? Well, you have to put, uh, you have to control their currencies. Mm -hmm. You have to control every transaction. It's, uh, in fact, the foundational control of mankind is through money. Well, when you do that, you enslave people. They're no longer free. That's true. We have here, for example, a book called The Art of Paper Currency. It's a huge book. You can see this, this is uh, the Bank of Ceylon's currency on here. and. Uh, here is the Central Bank of Egypt. You can see uh, right here. Well, there's a blank spot on these. And, and they are rainbow currencies. I can just flip anywhere in this book, for example. Uh, here is Iran. Iran's a good place to start yeah, because they, start with it, right? <laughs> they are the ones that our government says they're, they are uh, counterfeiting $100 bills, so we're going to have to change our currency. Yeah. Well, here is Iran's money. It's rainbow colored in pastel colors mm -hmm. and a blank spot. And what is this blank spot all about? Mm. Well, you know, our green bag does not have a blank spot. But all the other currencies of the world do. In fact, it looks like they were all, they all came off the same drawing board. The same artist designed all of these mm -hmm. various currencies. In fact, many of the currencies of other countries in the world are printed right here in the United States. <laughs> on printing presses. For example, Israel's currency, I'm told, was, is printed in Colorado. <laughs> and so we have this conspiracy going on for world government, but our money has never had a blank spot. Now this is a mock-up that came from public broadcasting, 
uh, that says that the currency is to get a facelift, maybe a dyed job. And uh, Janet L. Fix, the um, author of this article in USA Today, says a major plan to redesign greenbacks starting with $100 bills favored by drug dealers is expected by year's end. So it's just months away. The fascinating thing to me, Gary, about mm -hmm. this is that we had a change in our currency just a few years ago in 1991. We came out with this micro printing around the dollar bill and the, the little plastic thread that, that runs embedded in the paper. Mm -hmm. uh, this was supposed to deter uh, the counterfeiters. Mm -hmm. And it was at that time that we were told that Iran was counterfeiting $100 bills. Therefore, we were going to have to come out with this new money. Yeah. Now, a few years later, we are told Iran is counterfeiting this new money, so we're going to have to come out with newer money. And that's the purpose of it all. But the underlying yeah. purpose is that they might have a blank spot on that dollar bill. They call it a watermark. Indeed. I want to hold up a couple of uh, monies here. Uh, this this uh, happens to be a French 20 franc note. You'll notice the blank spot on the right. This happens to be a, a Japanese 500 yen note. Blank spot on the right. And with a watermark. You, with the watermark. If you hold this up to the light, you'll see uh, the face of the individual who's imprinted on the bill. The, the point is, JR, that each and every one of these bills is like cookie cutter money. It's uh, they all have slightly different designs, but mm -hmm. the overriding design is that so-called watermark, which yes. really is a blank spot. It would enable that bill to be overprinted with an international value, and money could literally be uh, internationalized overnight if something were imprinted in that little blank spot. Now, this was the thesis, uh, the, uh, the suggestion that we came up with a few years ago. We decided, you know, that when we've heard about this rainbow money um, and the various denominations printed in different colors back since the early 1970s. But there was such a hue and cry from grassroots America against it that yeah. the Fed backtracked and uh, uh, could not issue mm -hmm. this currency at that time. And now it's coming on again. Yeah, and that's not strong. all that's coming on again. We used to uh, hear about... Well, in fact, several times there has been the proposal that what would really make our society tick is a national identity card. Why that would solve so many problems and solve all kinds of theft problems and, and misidentification. And so we even had Bill Clinton at one point, uh, early in his presidency, uh, holding up uh, and proposing a national identity card. I think you've got In uh, fact, this, the this is uh, Newsweek magazine has him right here holding up this identity card and you can see it a little larger right here on the inside as he gives his speech and it says health security. Well I want you to know it's not going to be a health card. It's going to be far more than that. Gary tell us about it. Well we had a meeting recently between uh, the Postal Service, the Internal Revenue Service, and uh, a uh, a group called Card Tech Secure, the Card Tech Secure Tech uh, Card Conference. This was in Virginia, as federal agencies, including the United States Postal Service, the Internal Revenue Service, began detailing various proposals. At this gathering, and I'm quoting, where security experts convened to discuss business and governmental applications for smart card and PCMCIA memory card technologies, the Postal Service presented a proposal for a general purpose U.S. services smart card. Now this card, uh, by executive order, uh, a proposed executive order would facilitate the connection of individuals' bank accounts and federal records to a government identification card. Right now the discussion, JR, is this. Under which uh, branch of, of the bureaucracy should this card be issued? And the current uh, leaning seems to be toward the U.S. Postal Service. Mm -hmm. That through the Postal Service would come a multi-purpose card that would link electronic mail, e electronic banking, uh, perhaps credit card identification systems under one United States ID card. This would be a smart card. This would have uh, basically all the facts and figures of your life. Yeah. So that not a single transaction that you made would be considered private any longer enslaving, virtually enslaving the American public. Notice here it says that an executive order would connect the individual's bank accounts and federal records. 
executive orders right from Bill Clinton himself just with a stroke of the pen enslave the American people. That's an incredible possibility. Mm. Listen to that. Uh, read us that last uh, paragraph, uh, Gary. There uh, won't yeah, be anything. There won't be anything. Mm -hmm. if we, as I quote again, there won't be anything you do in business that won't be collected and analyzed by the government. Wow. Now, <laughs> this, of course, is uh, the, I'm reading from a publication called PC Week, which is a kind of an insider's com computer magazine dedicated to uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, at laying out the latest in computer developments. And this would indeed be one of the late developments because uh, it would take a computerized system to control uh, smart cards yeah. nationally and, by the way, internationally, because this system is already in use in places like Belgium and, and France. So we're talking about a, a global system here being proposed by a global group. And I think it's time really to get to maybe a discussion of yeah. who's doing it. Right, let me this. read this one more thing here. Okay. This article concludes by saying, quote, this is a better surveillance mechanism than Orwell or the government could have imagined. Wow. Incredible, isn't it? The conspiracy for world government is on track again. Yeah. Wow. And J.R., we've read about the planners of this movement. Mm -hmm. We read about them in the Bible in a very unlikely place, I think, in Ezekiel 38, the Battle of Gog. When Gog invades Israel, there is a group of people that is concerned, most concerned about this invasion. And we read Ezekiel 38, 13, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey? And we've talked about this before, Sheba and Dedan being the two divisions of uh, the Arab tribal history, the merchants of Tarshish being uh, business interests in yeah in England specifically. We could but just call it the International Banking Cartel, exactly. European-based. European-based. Mm -hmm. The Young Lions would then be uh, the Western Hemisphere. What we have here is the merchant bankers of the world. Uh, the engine for their economic system is fueled by Mideast oil. And they have a great, great interest in maintaining uh, transportation, uh, the transportation uh, interchanges of the world, mm -hmm. monetary interchanges of the world, uh, synchronizing the global uh, flow of money through international uh, markets. These people, J.R., are mentioned in the Bible specifically as resisting Gog when Gog invades Israel. You know, it's kind of fascinating that if we look at the world today, Russia, that is Gog, Russia is on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. Russia is not a part of this international banking system, but would very much like to be. And the one thing that could trigger this invasion of Gog would be for the international banking cartel to refuse to monetize the Russian ruble. And when they're left out in the cold, then they have to come back. They are a caged lion or a wounded bear. They have to come out fighting. And uh, I think that's what we can see in the making today because one of these days, Russia is going to move against Israel. The question is why? Yeah. I think this will take the international banking cartel by surprise. I do indeed think And will right. destroy this economic world system they're trying to put together. You see, God will have them in derision. They're plotting and planning and conspiring for this world economic wow. system. They're setting up all of the regions around the world. They're controlling all the monies and the currencies of the world. But it'll just take one act of God to throw a monkey wrench into the whole works. God will have them in derision. And we read about, uh, about them again in James chapter 5, a most famous New Testament prophecy. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Now, Get this, ye have heaped together treasure for the last days. J.R., I believe that James here is addressing the internationalists, the global yes. monetists, the merchant bankers, if you will, 
who have a utopian idea about how to control the world, and they've heaped together treasure for the last days, a, mm -hmm. a global financial system, but it's going to be destroyed. And I believe yes. it's going to be destroyed going into the tribulation period, in the first year of the tribulation period. And that's, I, I guess that's the reason why the, um, uh, the international banking cartel, Sheba and D. Dan, the merchants of Tarsus in Ezekiel 38, 13, ask Russia, uh, are you coming to take a spoil? You know, and they questioned this. Mm. They're going to be caught off guard, but Russia will be destroyed. But I think in, in all of this, mm -hmm. the world economies will be destroyed. Daniel tells us that this little horn that comes up will pluck up three of those ten horns or ten kingdoms by the roots. That is, I think he will destroy their financial base. Mm -hmm. And in doing so then, out of the ashes of this international banking cartel will arise the Antichrist. Of course, I don't think he's a dark horse. I think he's one of them. And he'll and come They're forth. going to try to pick up the pieces. You know, uh, when Hitler came to power, it was in, in exactly the same way. It was out of the financial ruin of post-World War I Europe that Hitler rose to power and said, I can fix this whole problem. And you know, people believed him. Mm -hmm. And I believe we're going to see a similar thing work itself out in the days of Antichrist. Yes. The point is that between now and then, the globalist are, our globalists are very, very busy. Yes. And you know, maybe uh, their master and leader, Satan, knows that they have but a short time to work to get this whole system in place. It's moving quickly. Yes. And I think that's the reason why we see the present administration making so many foolish moves. They're in a hurry to get on with this utopia without God. And so we have them uh, passing a law uh, that makes it a federal crime to picket abortion clinics. Uh, they've got to maintain population control, and this is their baby, and they don't want anybody interfering mm. with it. And so now they make it a federal crime. And of course, there is abortion on demand, and homosexuals in the military, and uh, federalization of education, crushing tax height, weakened military under non-American control, mm. and now a health care program that will destroy the healthcare industry in our country today. It's absolutely incredible, Gary. Yes, it is. And JR, what it says is that we need to keep the faith in these closing hours yeah. more than ever before. Amen. We're on the winning side. Don't forget that. Jesus is coming soon. We'll be back in just a moment.